All right, guys, we're ready to embark on the longest move for our farm. I don't know what to think. It's May. Hold on. May 12th. It's May 12th today. All five drills are here. We got the fuel wagon. I'm gonna put my light bar on top here on those magnet mount. There we go. Turn that puppy on. So we're gonna have a pallet in front of us and a pilot behind us. There we go. All right, let's get going. So I think what we're gonna try and do is we're gonna try and take a different route. Normally we take the highway, like the whole way. And well, that's fine, but we meet a lot of traffic. So we're actually gonna, for the first time ever, try a bunch of back roads. Most likely we'll get ourselves lost. Hopefully not. And we're about to find out how to navigate all these back roads. Hopefully there's no bridges and power lines and so on and so forth. Terry's gonna take the uh, tail end this time. Jared's in front of me and Brian's taking lead. So I'm literally right in the middle. Oh, hold on. Sorry about that. Just had to go and uh, run out and uh, check some valves there on Ashton's drill. But anyway, we're all lined up. Everyone's behind me. We're gonna bring one of our rollers with us. That is Sam operating that one, which is who is Brian's wife. I think that roller is around an 87 foot roller, give or take. And it's being pulled by a 930, dueled up. So, we have two rollers. One's gonna stay here and keep rolling the stuff that we just finished eating. And then one's gonna come with us to go up north. I think the move's like 75 miles or something one way, give or take, something like that. So, uh, We'll be moving most of the day. And uh, so we have a fuel wagon, and Mark is piloting us up front. And then we have another pilot behind us with our portable shop in case we have any issues or anything. Hopefully, we don't. Hopefully, it's a very successful run. Uh, we're going to try and stay off the highway, like I said this year. I, I have mixed feelings. Staying on the highway, you can go much faster speed. Um, but if you have to meet a lot of people, sometimes that will slow you down. If you are on a back road and you have trouble, I would much prefer to be on a back road, a dirt road, a grid road, and if you have a flat tire or bearing or something, go. You, you don't wanna have a mile long convoy and plug off the highway. So there's pros and cons to it. Who knows, we'll see how this day goes. We'll try something different, we like trying new things. We meet our first semi, but we're gonna meet our first highway department of highways truck because they've been working on the roads. It's always busy anytime you actually want to move. It's always busy. No, he's pulling over too. I like this. Now there's oh. one other vehicle. Oh. Sounds like everyone's pulling over. This is great news. It's gonna be a great morning. Two other vehicles. <laughs> oh. 
lot of traffic, I guess. Holy, what is this, number one? <laughs> I was going to say, this is crazy. That this is very difficult to do. I'm trying to keep it as steady as, as I can here. Okay, I gotta let you go so I can get around this guy. Yes, we made it. All is well, and we're only five minutes into the move. And we got another vehicle. I think it's Department of Highways as well. Thank you for pulling over, good sir. Didn't wave, but I guess that is how it is. Got another yeah, department highway here. Yeah. why we want to get off the highway if we can because the highway is so narrow it's really hard to meet people oh yeah I just want to note that uh, everybody waves to everybody in southwest Saskatchewan seriously everybody waves to everybody you don't you don't even have to know them you just wave heck you could be in northwest Saskatchewan or northeast Saskatchewan it doesn't matter you always wave you meet if you're meeting somebody down a back road on a gravel road or a dirt road you slow down to 60 kilometers maximum that's courtesy so that way you don't rock their windshield but I have gone to lots of different places in the province where apparently that code does not exist because I'll slow down to like 60 kilometers on the road and get over. I don't want to rock anybody with my pickup truck and all of a sudden, and they go by me doing about 60 miles an hour. And I'm like, holy crap, where's the courtesy? Come on. So uh, apparently it's not all over Saskatchewan, I guess. But anyways, that's just what we do. And we got another Department of Highways. It's pretty early for him to be out. I'm actually surprised. Now oh, we got by the Highway Patrol. Now we have a Border Patrol. Holy crap! When I say Highway Patrol, I mean like Department of Highways. You need to go on the approach right there. Looks like the Border guy is the only guy is the only guy who won't just stay there and wait for us all to go by. I guess I gave him too much road. Shouldn't even got over. If they're gonna be ignorant, then uh, we can easily take up the whole highway. The sad part is, that's the attitude of the Canadian Border Patrol right there. Yup, you just saw it. And uh, yeah, I'm just, I'm just gonna leave that right there. I'm just gonna leave that right there. So now we're going east and we wanna go north. And the reason why we have to go east is because we can't just there's a town back there and we can't get through it because the lines are too low and uh, so we're actually going around out of our way to backtrack and get back to the highway going north. So these are the, I guess this is life when it comes to moving big drills down the road. There's only certain routes that you can take and you and again you hope there's no bridges. Well you would map your route out first to make sure there's no bridges that you can, can't get through, uh, no lines that you can't get under. Um, so on so forth. Ouch! Oh, that was rough. Man, that's hard on stuff. You hit something like that. Now I'm peeved off. I can't even finish my sentence. Ever since I hit that pothole, the sensor has come back. Wait about it. 
it and it just doesn't cool anymore or? It pumps out hot, hot air. Yeah. It's gonna be a freaking long move. If this thing's gonna beep at me every 20 seconds. Oh my word. So I had the tech down, as you guys know, and he ordered me a new sensor. Oh, no, no, he has not come in yet, I guess. Out, right? All right, we're just coming to a stop here now. Oh, yeah, sh shut up. Uh, not you guys. We got to do our bearing check, wheel check to make sure everything is good to go. We do these things periodically. everything make sure everything's good I don't remember the big tires are fine it's always these back ones that are more prone to issues nothing's dragging on the ground here nothing wrong with the hitch all the pins are in nothing's broke off or dragging anywhere everything looks fine studs look fine yeah, okay. Everything looks fine over here. Okay. Oh. I think we're good. Alright, we're good. And we're off. So we're getting close to a valley. Um, it's a 6% grade for a mile and a half or something, I can't remember. And it's a 7% grade on the other side. There's a bridge at the bottom and guardrails going down one side for quite a ways. So we cannot meet anybody when there's a guardrail there. We take the whole highway up. So we have sent Mark ahead. He's gonna to go to the other side of the valley and he's gonna stop all traffic. And then Rick behind is gonna wait up on top here until we get out the other side and stop all traffic coming from behind us because the last thing you want is a semi flying down there at Mach 3 and just realize that uh, yeah right there there's the there's the six percent grade for two kilometers normally we don't we like to be empty when we go down here we're not empty we're not empty right now so we are about half and that's extra weight gonna push on us. Carts do have brakes, we have brakes, we also have engine brakes. We haven't had any runaways yet, and hopefully we won't. We have had some uh, emergency pullovers because some people have blown right past our pilot vehicles and uh, we have to literally force them down the ditch because we can't get over. So we're pulled over because just as we're going down, uh, a semi got by, so uh, we can't meet. So 
but we're literally kind of scattered out. So we have to wait for the semi. We also have people behind us that would like to go by. So uh, as we're waiting for this truck, it's a solid line. They really can't see. So uh, we know there's a truck coming after that. We can wave them by. Here comes one. Here comes two. And now there's a, there's a semi behind us, but I don't think he can come by because we're going to have a semi yeah. coming up. So we're holding the semi off behind us because it's not safe for him to go yet. So now we're waiting on the semi behind us. Meanwhile, we have traffic blocked off on the other side of the valley. And it's going to take us four kilometers, two kilometers, four kilometers to get through this thing. Meanwhile, the, the semi doesn't know if he should go. It's a solid line. He doesn't know. A, we, we're taking up a whole mile of highway here. But he doesn't know that we have the highway blocked off. Here he comes. Take it. Take it to Sammy Bias and we'll get going. Okay, 